Hey, this is Trent Rush welcoming you to the Under the Halo podcast. It's been a little over a year since Nolan Shonowell was drafted by the Angels, and it's been a little over a year that he's been playing in the major leagues after basically just 40 days in professional baseball before he made his big league debut. We talked about that debut, the expectations he had on himself, what it was like being in the clubhouse with so many star veterans around him and handling some of that, and we get to know Nolan on a much more personal level. That's what we do here on the under the Halo podcast. So here now is our chat with Angels first baseman, Nolan Shonowell. Nolan, I appreciate you bringing a little Boca Raton to the broadcast yeah, today with the, with the attire. I feel like you uh, brought it out. I noticed uh, the full beard is back, and we decided to just abandon just the mustache. Uh, could you fill us in on what the, uh, what the little mustache era for Nolan Shonowell was all about? Um, I would have to say Strickland definitely uh, led the pack on that. Mm-hmm. And then shortly after, it was Neto and Hop, and um, they started to drag me into it. And I was like, I, I got to do it for the boys, and d- went full go, uh, shaved everything, kept the mustache, and then two days later, everything kind of grew back. Okay. So I haven't got back around to it, and I if I think Neto kind of abandoned it, Ohapi abandoned it a little while ago. Strix, 50-50 on it, sure. so we'll see, we'll see where it goes. Who wore it the best? I'd have to say Strick. Strick's okay. got nice, nice facial hair, and I think um, just just the way he did it the first day, kind of with a little bit of the handlebars going, and he definitely pulls it off the best. The handlebar is a nice touch, absolutely. It seems like, I mean, you say, uh, oh, yeah, Zach was into it, and Logan's into it, and they're dragging you along. Logan, I got to tell you, that's the impression I get with you guys all the time. What, what's the... What's the dynamic like, the family dynamic of especially you three with Logan, Zach, and yourself? I mean, it, like the whole clubhouse culture, mm-hmm. um, us being the young guys in there and uh, just try, trying to kind of adapt to the culture and us three kind of going through all the same situation. Um, we're just big go with the flow guys. so. Uh, with Strick kind of leading the pack on that, we kind of just okay. jumped right on board. Um, I loved it. I, I love doing kind of outlandish, kind of out of comfort things, and um, it was cool to see other guys do it. And would you do that kind of stuff like with your college teammates when you're at Florida Atlantic? Um, I would say I would. I would probably have to be the one yeah. to initiate it, okay. and uh, a lot of guys couldn't really go facial hair so but I, I could see a couple of the guys doing it but not not a, not like it is here going back to being with Zach and Logan and those guys and watching the three of you I think it's fun I think a lot of fans enjoy the dynamic I've heard from both of them you are like the little brother yeah is that are you are you okay with that role as a little brother um I would say it, it's it's funny that they said that because the first day I got here um well, kind of like the first day I got drafted, yeah. I, I got a DM from both of them, and it was kind of like putting me under their wing right away, and yeah. it getting called up so early, and having those guys that also kind of really young and been through it, it was awesome to see and learn from them and how they kind of dealt with it. So I would say uh, I've kind of taken the little brother role from a couple people. Uh, last year being Mike Mustakas, really, really good mentor for me. Uh, Willie Calhoun was really good, really good guy for me. I mean KP, yeah. and then Hop and Neto obviously, but they're they're both uh, little brothers to everybody else. So well, they gotta have somebody to pick. Exactly, I think that's, that's what it is. <laughs> and that you were all that was yes. left. I think is kind of yes. what happened there. No, and you gotta you gotta fill me in on this. I remember talking to you when you got drafted, and we all kind of joked like, "Hey, we will see you soon." Yeah, I did not think it was gonna be forty days later. Was that ever in your mind at all that you could be up that quick? Um, I wouldn't say 40 days. Uh, I, I Obviously, I set the bar high um, mm-hmm. like I do with everything, especially baseball. But uh, once I got the call from low A to double A, I was kind of like, all right, like this is this is awesome. What was that, like Neto. two days or something? I, I would say, yeah, I yeah, think, I think two or like three two days. days. Yeah. And I... I, I I never played with Neto growing up, but I played against him a lot being from the same area and just seeing how fast he went through, um, kind of just, I wouldn't say hope, but gave me like something to strive for. Yeah. And 
he's a, he's a great b- baseball player, obviously a great person. And just looking up to him from after getting drafted was kind of just set the, set the bar high just like he did. And 40 days later, got the call, and it was just history from there, I guess. So. Yeah, I mean, it's been cool. And now you've been up for a year. I, I can only imagine, like, the multitude of things you have learned in that last year. And uh, just – do you ever sit back and think about man like the last i mean we we passed we passed the anniversary i think about a month ago it's like a year Uh and a month do you ever think about like man what a what a crazy 13 month that was it it, i mean going back and from the start of the year it was like a year ago today i was still in college taking accounting and doing all these outlandish classes (laughs) and uh looking back yesterday i think i if I remember correctly, yesterday was my home run anniversary. I hit my first home run a year ago yesterday. And just seeing how much I've kind of accomplished in such a short period of time is, is, is cool to go back and see. And just it, it's awesome to be able to have that opportunity and seeing how kind of the game of baseball has changed, like Paul Skeens, Dylan Cruz, Jacob Wilson, uh, Hurston Waldrop for a little bit earlier this year, just a year ago today. Uh, they were in this they were in the minors just got drafted a couple days ago a month ago and already making their mlb debut and it's awesome to see how kind of the the game of baseball is changing just like football you get drafted you're straight into it so it's it's awesome to see there's a young wave the guys that can Mm -hmm. play get up here for the record i think accounting would not be considered an outlandish class you might have taken some other (laughs) outlandish classes i don't know that accounting (laughs) was one of them that being said like can we talk about your 2023 for a moment? The fact that the college baseball season starts in February. You're going through it, and, I, and I'm, you knew you were going to get drafted and probably would get taken pretty high. I think that you have a season like you did your last year at Florida Atlantic. That's to be expected. You put mm-hmm. up those kind of numbers. But to go through like the experience of being on campus at Florida Atlantic, going through the season that you had, then through the draft process, then to the major league level, I'm exhausted thinking about it, Nolan. <laughs> like, what do, you, what do you remember about just what that year was like? Um, I just remember really early on it was stressful. Um, I tried not to think as much possible about the draft. I tried to put yeah. that aside and just worry about my teammates, my coaches, and just making it as far as possible in, in that collegiate season. Um, I remember the year before my sophomore year, I had uh, Gabe Rinconis. He got drafted by the Philadelphia mm-hmm. Phillies uh, that year. And just him and I were really close friends. And just seeing how he kind of dealt with all, all the noise from the outside and as much as, as possible, try to push it away and just focus on him, like not even just himself, his teammates and just the team in general. And I just strive to be like that. And it was cool to have a mentor all, all three years of uh, – or the two years prior yeah. for that collegiate season, I had B.J. Murray. He he got drafted to the Cubs my freshman year and just seeing how he dealt with everything. And it, it's just really cool to have those guys that are older than you just to mentor you. And even now, just have, have those older veterans kind of take you under the wing like we were just saying and yeah. just show you the ropes. And that's how you, that's how you get better. That's how you learn. And I think that's the biggest thing for, for the young guys, just to learn from them. They've been here long enough, and they're, they're here for a long time for a reason. So I think that's the most important thing for me that I've learned in my, uh, in my past. So Going back to something you were talking about a little bit earlier, and I think it's an interesting dynamic because we do kind of see, like, the way Logan kind of goes about it. He is, like, he's like the big brother, and Zach is mm-hmm. like the middle child. And then, and then here comes Nolan. But... <laughs> looking at a bigger picture, like they're all still so young too. Yeah. And when you have a player like last year, a, a Mike Moustakis, we got mm-hmm. to know Kevin Pillar on this podcast. He sat where you were sitting yeah. uh, a couple of months ago, and we had a long conversation about a lot of different things. When players like that come through, I know you're a Bull Durham fan. I am mm-hmm. too. When you can have a Crash Davis in the clubhouse, yeah. like how, how valuable is that? It's awesome. Um, I think – Last year was the most important year for me to learn, um, being kind of pushed pushed up really quick, and just learning from those guys is what uh, kind of helped me helped me out this year. Because if I didn't have that guidance last year, I think I would have been a mess at the start of the year. Um, trying to learn how, like, just every little thing, like when when to lift, when when to do certain things, uh, routine is a big thing. Um, and Mike was 
just perfect for me last year. Um, took took about a couple of days to kind of warm up to him, um, being being how young I was and how quick uh, I went through the system. But um, having him last year was just kind of pushed me over the top. It really helped me out. Uh, every time I had a question, I went to him, and I, I wasn't scared to ask. That that was the most important thing was. Uh, not being scared to ask questions in because earlier on I was like I don't even know who to ask I don't want to ask anyone I don't want to look stupid yeah. so just having him there definitely helped out tremendously I, I wanted to get your perspective on that you've been here long enough now that I, I, I'm certain it's not an issue anymore but I mean to spend that little time in professional baseball all of a sudden you're in the major leagues I would think there's probably a little bit of pressure or expectation mm -hmm. on everybody else that you probably maybe even put on yourself feeling like, man, if I get in push up this quickly, I gotta, I gotta live up to that. Yeah. On top of it, you're coming into a room where, I mean, last season with Mike Trout and Shohei Otani and, and Mike Moustakis is mm -hmm. accomplished he is, Anthony Rendon, and, and there are a lot of veteran players in that room. So when you do come into a clubhouse like that, like what goes through your mind? I think the, the first thing that went through my mind was uh, I played MLB The Show a lot growing up and in middle school I played with all these all these guys <laughs> and seeing seeing Mike Trout, uh, seeing Shohei, um, Mike Moustakis when he was on the Royals, just amazing, like different, like crazy player. Um, and Rendon when he was on, on the Nationals growing up watching that. Uh, I grew up a big Trey Turner fan. He went to my high school, so kind of seeing him play with Trey was amazing. And getting that that call and being in the the locker room for the first day, I was in like shell shock. Yeah. Uh, just kind of walked in and see all these guys and kind of not knowing what to say. Like, don't want to step on anybody's sure. toes. Don't want to mess up by asking, like I said, stupid questions. But just kind of sitting there and all like. I'm in the same locker room as these guys and uh, kind of switching your mentality to do I belong here and just throwing that outside and saying I'm here for a reason. Yeah. But for I would say the first couple of days I was scared to talk to him. You know, it's yeah. like you grow up fans of these guys and you don't get to know them on a personal level and then kind of you, you flip the switch to being fans to teammates and friends and like when you're on the field you're brothers yeah. and I think just switching that mentality kind of changed my perspective on every one of these guys to not just a baseball player but to family so what made you feel like you belonged I would say um I, I listened to uh Geyer a lot Brandon Geyer and he he did a I don't know if it was a podcast but he talked and he he told me his story about when he got called up or when he was in, uh, he was in the World Series, and he he was dealing with some mentality issues and all that. And he said, once he flipped the switch to saying, "Do I belong here?" to "I'm here now. There's a reason why I'm here." is kind of kind of what flipped for me that yeah. first day. Like I just I, I remember him saying that, and it helped me a lot because he was he's he's been around a lot. Uh, he was here a lot more last year, but just talking to him and learning from him is another reason why like mentality is a big part of this game and just learning from all these older guys and it's just it's yeah. awesome to do was there a was there a moment with a teammate that was like okay this is this is pretty cool i feel like i'm I feel like i'm part of the family now was there was there any interaction like that uh i would say kind of when i first got here yeah. hop like right away like just took me like literally took me around showed me under his shoulder, under under his arm, and kind of gave me the rundown of what what happens every day. Uh, showed me where everything was, and um, I think like that first day you get here, you got the jitters. Like I didn't sleep the whole day. Like sure, just, how could you? Yeah, adrenaline's running, and for him to kind of settle me down was just really important. And uh, you're you're going out, and you're, you're you you got to play yeah. a game every day, so. Just settle down for the game. Like, don't overdo it. He helped a lot with that, especially you, that day. Do you ever think about, like, how crazy it is now? Like, like now you've been here for more than a year. Now a bunch of other guys are coming yeah. up, and you're kind of showing them the ropes. Like, have you have you thought about just how, how crazy that is at this point in your life? It is crazy. Uh, I think it, it's crazy because I, I I wouldn't say I've turned into Hop because Hop, Hop is 
a different guy. Like he's, I mean, he's a leader. We call him captain. Like he, he's Captain America. Like it, it's, it's crazy. But just learning from him and seeing these guys come up and not doing as much as Hop because nobody's he's, doing. He's, yeah, he's <laughs> on a whole nother level. But just kind of teaching these guys. Yeah. Um, like Nico, uh, just he got called called up about a month ago and just kind of gave him the lowdown. Um, Hop Hop gives every one of the guys the the special treatment, which is awesome. But just give, giving all these guys the little ins and outs and what what like they need to do, what they can't do, and all that stuff, and just seeing them learn and it, it's crazy because the first week your your mind's going crazy. Like, am I allowed to do this? Am I not allowed to do this? Uh, there's a lot of unwritten rules that people don't know about, and it's it's crazy to learn them, especially that that first week you're like, all right, cross this off, can't do this, <laughs> stick to this, uh, and just learning every day you come in. You do not want uh, you don't want a code violation. No, you gotta, you gotta make sure not. you stay away from that. Uh, what do you like to do for fun? How do you relax? Uh, I would say I love to fish. I, I okay. love to fish. Um, like I, like like. Open water, deep sea, like, yeah. like being a Florida guy, I'd imagine not a lot of lake fishing. You're going I, out in the ocean. I like to do both, but I, I mm-hmm. definitely a lot more ocean fishing. I haven't been out here, um, which is kind of sad because I love to There's fish. There's some great spots. Spot, I, yeah. That's what I've heard. And yeah. but in the off season, I like to go out offshore, a couple of buddies, and uh, just sailfish, mahi, tuna, whatever it is. Go out, game fish, and have some fun. It's I think that's like my meditation being out in the ocean and just relax. So can you like, like you, you catch a tuna, can you like prepare it on the, like, do you know how to handle that kind of um, stuff or do you, do you leave that to the experts? I, I, I think I could, I could prepare it. I could flay it, but I leave the, the cooking part up to my mom or dad or a, a buddy. Okay. I, I like, uh, one of my, my, one of my buddies, he actually, did it on the boat we had this, like some shishimi on the boat and it was just it was crazy i've never done it before so it was i mean I, i've never had a fish taste so good in my life it was crazy that's big time that's really big time and this is also i mean you gotta understand where i'm sitting right now we had kate and dana here just oh, yeah. a couple of weeks ago and we were talking about him bringing his grill along so he is <laughs> he is like the personal chef for everybody cooking for himself steaks all the time uh so you cooking is not not your thing um i would say I like to cook here and there. Okay. Um, I, I'm trying to learn more dishes. I'm like Dana, two meals, same meal every day. I would say I could cook ground beef and steak. That's I, I would say I'm pretty similar. Like that's okay. the only things I kind of I stay away from all the like Italian and all that. I, I keep it simple with the meats I like okay. to do. So when you guys get into a new city and you had an off day the next day. Um, what like what happens? You go you go out with you go out with Logan. You go out with with Zach. How do you guys how do you guys connect? Does that does that kind of stuff happen on the road? Yeah, I I think it depends on where we go and if if family's in town. Yeah. Um, but we 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 would go out to eat the either the night before or that day yeah. on the off day. Um, and we kind of do we, we try to do a, a team dinner whoever whoever can come. But I like to sightsee a lot. Um, especially when going to new places like we go to we went to san francisco uh got to see the golden gate bridge uh walked around in canada in new york just kind of see all that chaos was it was pretty fun and broadway um were you able to just i gotta stop you for a second we're gonna go back to this uh then joyce had a hard time identifying what the golden gate bridge was were you were you okay with that were you able to know (laughs) what the golden gate bridge was not the bay bridge yes so i actually (laughs) i was I was on my way to see the Golden Gate Bridge, and I looked, and I see that he posted something <laughs> on Instagram, and I'm, I'm like, that's that's, that's not, not the that's not <laughs> that's not the bridge, Ben. Uh, I didn't say anything to him because I was like, I didn't want to be wrong because <laughs> yeah. I was like, it's not that color, you know, and it, it doesn't look like that. But he when he, when he posted, it, I was I was kind of. I was waiting for somebody to say something in in our group chat yeah. and nobody said something and then I see it five minutes later on Twitter uh, somebody called him out yeah. and I was like all right somebody had to because I didn't have kind of the heart to do it I was like <laughs> I didn't I didn't want to say anything but I, I went and I saw I saw the the Golden Gate Bridge that day okay. 
and I was like, man, you got to go see it. Like you can't, you can't go to the wrong one right. and not go to see the correct one. And he's, I think he ended up going the next day. So that was pretty funny. Was there a, uh and this isn't I'm not nobody read into this okay I'm not asking no one what city he likes best but I would like to know like as a when you go like sightseeing was there was there a city that you really enjoyed like just taking in some of the sites that you wanted to go see I think San Francisco was yeah. the best uh, uh, I went to uh, a beach and I was about four four hundred feet 200, 200 to four hundred feet up the air on this mountain overlooking the beach mm. um, I don't I don't remember what it was called it was i think it was a part of a like a war or okay. something happened there and i just remember just sitting there and looking over the beach for about an hour and kind of like facetiming buddies back home my girlfriend and showing them and it was like it was, i was speechless i was like we don't have this in florida we don't have yeah. any kind of mountains we we don't have anything like that so it was, it was really cool to see and Something I've never experienced before. California's a neat place. Like, yeah. like geography, like if you're into that, if you're into sightseeing, like there is some amazing places out here. Had you been out west? Have you been to California before you got drafted? Um, I have been, I think I came twice. I have okay. one of my uncles lived out here in, in San Jose, so okay. closer to San Francisco. I came out once when I was, uh, I was about 12 years old, got to see the Golden Gate Bridge, yeah. um, went to a Giants game. But... I, I haven't been back since that, and I was only here for a week, so okay. kind of, it, it, it's a lot different than Florida, and in a good way, and it's just, it's it, like I said, like there's so much more out here than there is out there, and it's it's different. It's it's definitely a, a lot different than what I expected. Have you been? Have you had a chance? I know, like, I think people, probably people don't totally understand like the demand of the schedule during the baseball season. Home off days, what do you got, like four all season, maybe not even that many? Yeah. So, do you, But do you ever get a chance just around SoCal to, to be able to take in a little bit what, what, you, what we got here? Um, I would say it it depends on how late we get in. Yeah. Um, if we get in super late, I, I like to sleep in. Um, and I'll kind of lounge around, watch a movie, or explore what's around here. But if, if we have a, a game here and then – an off day then i like to go like checked out long beach um newport laguna all those places really nice uh the beach um uh caprino went went to went to his uh place uh, on the beach and that place is just absolutely sick and just kind of taking in that uh where we took pictures with the team was with uh with hop netto and uh detmers that place was insane and uh, it, it's just the beaches here are a lot different yeah. than the beaches in Florida and the water's a lot colder but the colder. views are definitely <laughs> a lot better I'll say that uh no and I have not been I have not I don't think put my foot in the Pacific Ocean probably in, <laughs> probably in 10 years I've been to the beach a lot I've walked on the sand a lot I don't know that I've actually been in the water in a long time but uh you're right it is uh it is pretty cool down here it's cool to check stuff out um uh, we know you like your sleep, and there were some there were some comments about that earlier in the season. Have you been able to kind of make your adjustment for for getting a, a day game schedule a little bit better as the season's gone on? Um, yeah, uh, I want to make it clear I wasn't actually sleeping. For everybody that says <laughs> I did, I like it, the time change everywhere we go. I've never been used to that. I, I've been on the East Coast my whole life. Uh, when we traveled in for college, we never left that time zone maybe we went to texas but that's one hour difference and I'm, 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 i wasn't used to the three hour there back sure. and uh i think that's where a lot of people got confused where i wasn't actually sleeping i i think i for day games i get here i'm one of the first ones here yeah. every day and it was just an adjustment that i had to make um to keep myself kind of moving uh don't don't get too stiff and don't like just got to keep moving, keep my body going, drink a coffee, and just fired up. I think uh, when Wash said that, people took it out of context a little bit, but yeah. uh, I definitely uh, adjusted a lot since that, that first month. Speaking of Wash, as someone that has accomplished a lot in the game and has accomplished a lot as a manager, a lot of winning mm -hmm. seasons in Texas, and we've seen him uh, with the, the teaching and the development – we talked earlier this year, and I've said it on, on my show, on the radio, a lot, but 
your defense has improved so much this year. It's been really cool to see. How, how proud are you of that, and, and how much of, of an impact has, has Ron Washington or Ryan Goins maybe had in, in your defensive improvement? Yeah, I, I, I'd like to say that before this year, I, I kind of didn't really care about the defensive part of the game. I was kind of just out there to fill a position, and yeah. coming into spring training, that mentality switched right away. I think it was it was day one where it was like, all right, defense is just as important as offense, and Gogo and Wash have been big parts of that, taking me from like the first day of spring training. I think we were out there for at least an hour doing just defensive drills, and. For anyone that knows, spring training first day is not like that. So everybody was saying this is new, this is not normally like this, but we got to work right away. And I think um, they kind of put put that in, like stapled that into my brain that defense is just like just as important, if not more important, than offense. And I go out there every day trying to show that and prove that kind of how, how much of an improvement I've made defensively from years in the past even last year to this year we see it defensively i think we've seen we know you can hit we've seen it before and there have been some moments this year where it's like man like it's where the breakout is coming and you've had it you've had a really good season but this has been a year not just you across the board a year of growth a year mm -hmm. of development for so many guys do you feel like when you look back at maybe where you were in february to where you are today that that growth has happened or have you had a chance maybe not to look at that yet um i would say yes uh yeah. I, I learn every day i come to the field and it's it's like school you, yeah. you don't you don't expect to learn something every day but you do and i think the more that i learn this year is i'm gonna take it into the off season and put it into my game in the off season uh I've never played this many games in my life in, in a year, so I think I'll have a plan going into the offseason on what I need to work on and where I need to develop, where I kind of need to step back from and put my focus into something else. And I, w I was talking to Jay Wash about this uh, literally last week, and it's, it's crazy how my mentality for the game has changed um, throughout the year and what like I need to focus on more before the game what I need to stop doing that's going to get me tired because it's a long season. Um, yeah. A lot of people don't realize we're at the field six hours before the game doing doing stuff and uh, it, it, it's just kind of pres preserving your body but still putting your body 100% on the line every night. So, How much of that do you feel like maybe you didn't have before that has kind of come along where, I mean, was there a moment where you felt like, man, I'm in a little bit of a rut right now. What's going on? Because you look at your numbers over the last couple of weeks, things have been pretty good, yeah. but we've seen you, you know, have, be in some slumps this year and get out of them. That's baseball. That happens yeah. all the time. But do you think maybe learning how to handle the body a little bit maybe had something to do with it? Yeah, I think um, a couple of times throughout the year, I, I either tweaked or something wasn't feeling right yeah. and uh, play through it. Like if it's not, if it's not injured, then you, you could play through it if it's just minimal kind of kind of hurt but it's it's I think the, the biggest thing is when you're struggling try not to focus on what's hurting uh, it'll it'll only make it worse and I, I've learned that throughout the year uh, where your body's gonna ache you just gotta you gotta go out there forget about it and whatever take yeah. take some take some medicine get some treatment uh, those guys are in there all every day all day trying to help you stay out on the field healthy and that that's one thing that I, I really learned. Uh, I didn't really uh, use that in college. Uh, I, I kind of stayed away from the treatment room, believed that there was no good in there. But it, my total, my mentality totally switched uh, coming into this year and knowing that those guys are there to keep you out on the field, and not off the field. It's been awesome to see. Uh, your parents make it out to many games. This year they came out uh, to a couple. Yeah. Um, they have to be so proud. Oh, uh, they're. I mean, they're awesome. They're my number one supporters. Uh, they they watch almost every game when they can. It's a little different being out on the, sure. the East Coast, so the, the time change is a little a little harder for them to watch. But they came out Cleveland and a couple couple of the East Coast games. Flew out here for uh, summer. My mom's a teacher, so it's hard for her to get away, especially uh, right now with with classes and stuff. But they, they came out to uh, my dad came out to Kansas City. He's from uh, Missouri, so it wasn't wasn't a far trip for for him and. Uh, that part of the family and 
uh, whenever I, I kind of go through a little rut, they're the first ones calling me up, uh, just checking in on me, making sure uh, still mentality up there. And I mean, it's awesome that they, they support me so much. So. No, no, and I, I can't believe it's only we've only known each other for a little over a year, but it's been fun watching your journey. I can't wait to see what things are like when we get into spring training, because I know it's going to be a really busy off season for you. Congratulations on everything you've accomplished so far. And I really appreciate you being with us here on the show. Yeah, of course. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you, so, appreciate it. Good stuff, dude. Thanks for joining us on the Under the Halo podcast. If you want to check out any other episodes of the Under the Halo podcast, if you're watching on YouTube right now, we'll continue to check out youtube.com slash angels. Maybe you're going to be on the road driving and you can only listen. Well, an audio only podcast is available as well. You go to angels.com slash podcast to check that out or download and subscribe wherever you're getting your podcasts already. Again, my name is Trent Rush. Thanks for hanging out with us on the Under the Halo podcast.